Welcome to my first screencast. I'm going to show you how to convert a typical monolithic iOS application into something that is testable and portable. And we're going to use Xamarin for that, of course. Let me introduce myself first. My name is René. I'm 37 years old and I'm from Germany. I'm a Xamarin freelancer and I have been in the .NET business for almost 10 years. Today on our agenda, we have a very simple demo application, which is a calculator. We will implement that for iOS and then later on improve it so that we can see layers of responsibility inside the application. We will also make it testable and we will be able to easily port it over to Android. To follow this screencast, you need basic knowledge about Xamarin iOS or Android. In order to run the example application, which you can find on GitHub, you will need Xamarin.iOS and Android installed on your machine and you will also need the Visual Studio plugin. So you have decided to create your first iOS application. That's great! What will you do next? Probably you will go to Visual Studio and pick one of the predefined templates for an iOS application, then build the UI in the Storyboard Designer or an Interface Builder or maybe you're gonna do it in code. You will then just build and run your application and fix issues as you hit them or as your application crashes. That's a valid approach as long as the application is small enough. But let's see what that looks like in reality. Here we are in Visual Studio. This is the source code of the iOS application. It consists of one view controller, which is called Calc Controller and gets assigned to the root view controller in the app delegate. The controller adds two input fields to its view. One here called text input first and one there. It also adds a button which when clicked will calculate the sum of the values of the input fields. That's what it looks like. First input field and the second input field. If I click the button nothing's happening at the moment. We have to add this functionality. Let's go back to the code. Here it says, fill in missing business logic. That sounds like a lot of work, but it's really easy. Let me paste that in quickly. All right, here we go. What we do is, we take the text content of the first input field and the text content of the second input field and convert both of them to floats. We then calculate the sum of these two values and finally we use a UI alert view to spit out the result. Let's see how that works. Here's our simulator again. Let me enter some values. 3 and 5 and we expect that to be 8. Yay! Our calculator is working. That's awesome. But now let's enter something that cannot be converted into a float, like 5 at, and see what happens if we click the button. Boom, it's crashing. Well, that was expected. We see that 5 at cannot be converted into a float. So let's break, and here we are. This is the line we would have to fix. The obvious step to do now is to take this line and surround it with a try-catch block. We would catch the exception and handle it. Then we would have to reround our application and probably figure out that we have to do the same for the first summon too. This is not good coding style. The calculation has nothing to do with the UI. We should take that code and put it somewhere else. We have seen how the calculation and the UI are baked together. In order to test your calculation code, you always have to rerun the app, enter something into the input fields and hit the go button. We can do better. In order to do so, let's separate the UI from the calculation, introduce a view model and also add a test project. Let's see what that will look like. <coughs> 
Here we are back in Visual Studio. We are again inside the Calc controller, but this time we are using the second version of our iOS solution. If you look at the code, you can see that the touch up inside handler has changed a bit. It has still got a float called sum, but this time it is calculated from the return value of something called viewmodel.sum. Let's see what that is. I have added two more projects to the solution. Here we have the iOS solution and you can see that it's now referencing a core library. This core library is up here. You can also see that I have added a test project here. Now let's see what's inside the core library and what this library is about. If I go to the properties, we can see that this is actually a portable class library, which targets .NET Framework 4.5, Windows Store applications, Xamarin.Android and Xamarin iOS. This means we can reuse this library across all platforms. The library is very simple. It contains exactly one class, which is our calc view model. Think of a view model as kind of an abstraction over the real UI. It contains a property which represents the first input field's content. This is a string value. It also contains another property for the second input field and it's got a helper function. In this case it's a property which is called has invalid input values. What this does for us, it tells us of if either one of the properties or of the two input fields contains an invalid value. Say you enter some text value which cannot be casted to a float number, this will return true. Down here we have the method called sum. What this does is it's checking if the view model has invalid input values. If yes, it will return zero for the sum. If the input values are okay, it can be sure that it will be able to convert the first and the second input into floats and then simply return the sum of both. What this enables us to do now is we can now test this calculation behavior without actually running the UI. Therefore, we go into the next project, which is the monolith to xplet test project. In here, it has got one unit test class. I have added various tests here. Let's not go through them in detail. Just check one of them. Test some happy path. What I'm doing here is I'm creating an instance of our view model and then I assign two values to the input fields, 10 and 20. And you can see that these are strings. Then we do a test and see if our view model is behaving correctly. We assume that the property has invalid input values is now false because both values 10 and 20 can be converted into floats. Next, we let the view model calculate the sum of our two input values. And we expect that to be 30. Hence the assertion. If we run that, we can do it through Test Explorer. Let me run all tests quickly. It's building. And you see all our tests pass. So now we can be sure that our view model does the right thing in case the input values are correct and also if the input values are wrong. So with this knowledge, let's go back to our new iOS project. We reference our core library and we go to the calc controller. Up here, everything still looks the same. We have the two text fields and we have the button. Now here's the new part. 
we create an instance of the calc view model inside our iOS code. And we use this nice helper, which allows us to follow all changes of a text field and get informed of it. Whenever the text content of an input field changes, this handler will be called. What we do now is, we let the view model know what the current input values are. So we assign the text content of the first input field to the property first input. Similarly for the second input field, we assign the text content of the second input field to the second property. And here we can do something that is really nice. We can always, when the text fields change, check our view model. If the values have become invalid, we can simply enable or disable our calculation button. You will see this in the demo in a moment. Now our touch handler, like I already said, has changed a bit. The calculation is no longer done in code, but by the view model. So we just calculate the sum and then spit it out using the alert view, like we did before. Let me show you what that looks like. We will enter the same test values as before. The button is now disabled. I enter 3 and 5, the button becomes enabled and the result is still 8, that was expected. Now I will try to enter the same invalid value as I did before, 5 add, and you can see that the button immediately becomes disabled. Notice that the view model is doing that for us. Its property has invalid values became true and this in turn disabled the button. There is no UI logic involved here. Let's go back in the code and comment out the disabling of the button so we can see that the view model is actually handling the error situation. Back in the simulator we enter 3 and 5, it's still working. And now we enter the add again, click the button and the result is 0. That's what we expected from the view model and that's what our test showed. In the code we have an if that says if either one of the input values is invalid we want to have the sum as zero. Here is the code. So now we no longer have to catch the error situations in the UI code. The view model is handling everything for us. This is quite some improvement. Now that we have separated the UI and the business logic, it's really easy to port the application over to Android. All we have to do is create the native Android UI using the AXML designer. Then turn all the controllers into activities and in the end bind the view model and everything should start to work magically. Let's see what the Android version will look like. Here we are again in Visual Studio, this time inside the Android version of the project. I've already opened up the only layout which is the calc activity AXML file. It has the same input fields like the iOS version. One up here for the first summoned, one for the second and a button. In addition, we have one activity in here, our calc activity. This is the counterpart of the calc controller of the iOS version. What we do in here is we get the layout's input fields, here and the second one, and we get the button from the layout. And then, like in the iOS version, I am creating the view model instance here. And also similar to the iOS version, we have a text change handler for each input field. Whenever the user types a character or deletes one in the input fields, we are updating our view models. You know this code already from the iOS solution. Down here we have a click handler for our button. This is more complex than in iOS because it's using a builder. But the important part is here. The sum is again calculated by our view model. 
the UI is not responsible for doing anything. So I wrote all this code and I hit the play button. Let me show you what that looks like. Here is Motion running our application on Android. It looks pretty familiar, right? Let me enter some values. 66, 73, and that is 139. Let's recap what we learned in this screencast. First of all, separating business logic from the UI is extra work, but it makes the app testable with unit tests. And as a bonus, we can easily port the application to other platforms like we have seen in the Android example. All we have to do is create the UI code and then bind it to the view model. The UI code itself becomes independent from the business logic. This makes the code cleaner and clearer to read. The shared code can be put into a portable class library. It can be tested individually. Once it's working, you don't have to worry about it again. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me via email. You can find the whole project on GitHub. The URL is below.